it's always been about following the last trend. There's always been that in Hollywood. But I really think that it got watered down and watered down and watered down so that they, you know, it could be ordinary ruthless at the mall people. So, and, and this is not casting aspersion in the direction of Bette Midler because I'm real happy she's a star. I think she's great. But I think it's too bad she became a star in these kind of theme park movies. Is that what you think uh, the mall, Woody Allen mall picture? I haven't is? seen it. Um, That's the other thing you should know about me. I don't feel compelled to go to the movies anymore. I used to be one of those who wanted to see everything. I wanted to see it first. I would, I would want, I would go to, you know, do that thing on Friday afternoon where you go to the 12:30 to 2:30. I mean, I grew up in that era, you know, yeah. 25 cartoons, count them 25, and I don't feel that drawn anymore. Yeah, you used to bet at Manny's when you were seven, yeah. eight years old. Thank you for bringing that up. You bet on horses. Yeah, because I you caught him. When you were seven years old? Eight. Eight. Yeah. So you don't know about uh, this year's Oscars then? I bet if I ask you to name who's going to win, you wouldn't know and you don't care. the nominees. Then. Well, okay, so do it quickly. Okay. Now, for those watching, we are, at, as we tape here, live in New York City, we're about five now? hours before the Oscars. Okay. So most of you will see this and you'll be able to check her out. Did she, was she right? Best picture. Dances with Wolves. Best director. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be the Kevin, Kevin Costner, Costner show. Best actor. Kevin or maybe De Niro for playing Dustin Hoffman from last year. <laughs> In Awakening. Um, best, best actress. I think Joanne Woodward. For it's, Mr. and Mrs. Bridge. Yeah, I think. Uh, That's Mr. because Mrs. she's old, though. You know, it's not to, for the right reason. Well, she's not insulted. She was here no, with she us and care very about proudly that. said, "I'm 64." He's 65. How old is she? 63? Well, that's One. not old. I consider right. that middle age. <laughs> Support, supporting actor. We got to run here. This audience wants in here. Boy, do they want but in you here. you have to ask. Yeah, We've got I a mean. whole bus of Hollywood executives waiting in the lobby out here to come up and talk to you. <laughs> supporting actor. Bruce Davison, Andy Garcia, Graham Greene, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. Got uh, Goodfellas. Yeah, uh, I think that'll be the one thing they'll give Goodfellas. Supporting a actress. Uh, I would vote. I voted for Annette Benning, but she won't win. The Grifters. Oh, I thought that was a splendid. Well, who will win? Tell me. Who? Uh, Tell uh, me. Lorraine uh, Bracco, Whoopi Goldberg, Diane Ladd, Mary McDonald. Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg, Goldberg will win for Ghost. Yeah. And we'll be back with Julia Phillips. Uh, you'll never eat lunch in this town again in just a moment. <laughs> Hightower, are you sure you're eating the most nutritious cornflakes? I'd bet my bottom dollar on it. Mm. Joel and Henning, are you sure you're eating the best tasting cornflakes? I'd bet the rice. You may not know it, but now there's a cornflake from Total. Total cornflakes have twice the nutrition of Kellogg's, and they taste better, too. So before you bet on your cornflakes, mm. remember, the best cornflakes are from Total. At the Nelson house, they always love getting together for Sunday dinner. It's just special. Like the house dressing. Zesty Italian from Kraft. How the heck could he ever drop a ball like that? Only Kraft has the tangy, spicy taste that's made Zesty Italian the favorite at the Nelson house. And probably yours. Zesty Italian from Kraft. Have you ever played football? America's house dressing. Where's the one place you could have seen the Pope cranking it up, Joe Piscopo pumping it up, and Gilbert Gottfried all choked up? The Arsenio Hall Show. And if you tune in tonight, this is what you're going to see. Pat Benatar comes back into the spotlight with a new blues tune. Plus, you'll get the absolute final word on the Oscars from Siskel and Ebert. And don't miss Utah Jazz Big Shots Carl Malone and John Stockton. For a totally hot Tuesday, this is the place. The next Arsenio Hall Show. Watch it and laugh. Tonight at midnight on TV8. If you were looking for the perfect furniture store to shop, what would you look for? Well, you'd certainly want quality furniture built to look good for a long time. You'd want selection, too, and fair prices, good value for the dollar. 
Well, that's Pronimes, the perfect furniture store. More quality, more selection, and more value every day at Kronheim's. Kronheim's. Kronheim's Furniture, fashion and value since 1918. Kronheim's now. I don't, I didn't mean to confuse anybody. You are suggesting that, uh... A long time ago, when she performed in Vegas, she smoked pot on the stage. Barbara Streisand. That is the limit of the accusations, or the observation made. Not an accusation. She's on the album going... <laughs> Are you there, caller? I'm glad you waited. Hi. Yeah, I'd just like to make the point that I think it's pretty ironic that here you have a strong, assertive woman, and all the negative things that she says are being pointed out. I don't think this would happen with a man. I think that all of our sort of male-oriented society is so threatened by a strong woman and i applaud you julie i think you're great thank you very much thank you yes. Yes. tell us about the barbara streisand and don johnson melanie griffith love triangle or i she was i am out not of the... julia the gossip columnist i really don't know yes ma'am Yes, Julia. Did you get most of your information from friends that confided in you, or mostly from observing so. things going on? No, this is on? a total first-person account. This is my life. Yeah. Julia, who have you worked with that you feel has an authentic star quality about them? Well, at the time that I worked with them, totally Newman and Redford. Um, De Niro, not really. I think he's the greatest living American actor and will never be a star. Why is that? Maybe he's a too good an actor, you know? And he doesn't have a persona that's a Robert De Niro persona. Perso you know, stars act themselves in each role, or they come upon a persona that can then be translated into each role. Being as much that role and that person. And they really are the old timers. It really is Gary Cooper and Clark Gable and, and Tracy. Barbara Stanton. Tracy, let's understand this then. A star is most likely to be a person who's the same on the screen as off the screen, as in Jimmy Stewart, uh, Gary Cooper, Spencer Or whatever Tim. it is that the persona that, that, that comes alive on screen, because I'm sure you know enough stars to know they can be pretty dull at dinner parties. Well, but De Niro comes alive on the screen. De Niro is a fabulous cinematic person. Yes, but person. he changes each time. So he's being penalized for being a guy who takes the challenge of being fat as a prize Only fighter. Only in America. And, huh? Only in America. You always get penalized. So you're being, being penalized really then in the, in the Hollywood agent uh, A-list if you're too good an actor? Are you saying I this? I think so. See, this is why I just never What's wanted to be in movies because... Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Hello. Julia, you said you hated your mother, which I think is rather difficult to believe. And then you said your daughter saved your life. What's the association between your daughter and yourself now? It's really, it's very, that's a very interesting question. I hated my mother, I hated my mother, I hated my mother. I also loved my mother because you love your parents. So that's, you're totally torn and confused. And what I feel about my daughter saving my life is there I was doing free base, and one day when I was uh, whacked, she looked up at me with this beautiful four-year-old face and that unconditional love, and I thought, I would really like to be worthy of this unconditional love. And I spent the next year of my life getting clean so I could be worthy of it. And I don't think my mother ever took that step. She had an incredibly deprived childhood. She was an immigrant. She drifted through Russia for three years before she came to America. Her mother died in her arms, and she never availed herself of therapy, exercise, all the things that I do for myself to try to be worthy of my daughter's love, my mother wouldn't do. She medicated herself and she passed on the predilection toward addiction to me. Um, but the very last words of the book are for my mother, enough already, R.I.P. And I feel like I graduated therapy. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, I recently worked with Steven Silberg on the set of Hook, and I was wondering, I consider him a creative genius in filmmaking, and why is it that you call him a nerd? 
We're not. Why are those mutually exclusive? I, but Have you I, met a lot of creative geniuses? A lot of them are nerds. I mean, I was addressing myself in the book. I say he is a genius, but, no but doubt. But a nerd in what sense, though? I mean, do you classify him as a nerd in, in the artistic sense? Or no, a nerd is no, just some no. kind of a geek a that walks is, around in the... No, no, no. I, a nerd, a nerd a to me a is the guy a, in high school who, yeah, like, who, who you know, with a uh, plastic... The nerd is the guy who damn near I mean, blew I up the chemistry department. I mean, I think we all department. have the same <laughs> definition of what? You almost blew up the chemistry department, the nerd. <laughs> I interrupted you. You were saying. No, I mean, we look plastic. I mean, you know, that guy, you know, who eats Twinkies and, and doesn't go out for the team. I, it's, it's actually not a pejorative. It's just a classification. And I totally agree that he is a creative genius. I don't think that the two are mutually exclusive. Are you there, caller? Hi. Yes, I am. Sir. Uh, Phil. Yeah. Uh, I find it very abs uh, absurd. Due to the fact she stated she was an, an addict and uh, an alcoholic and she's in recovery already 11 years. Yeah. I'm a recovering alcoholic and addict for five. Yeah. You know, and I'm in a 12-step program. I'm not sure she is. She didn't discuss it, but I won't get any further. Wait a minute. Like, she does discuss it. She can't do the 12-step program because she can't get past the first one. She will not believe in a higher power. She's an atheistic Jew. Fantastic. Uh, but there's also a higher power that don't have to be God. It calls for be the room that she's going into to discuss and share her things, yeah. okay? And these are one of the things that I, f I think she's going against tradition and the steps is she's in the 12-step program because she, she just claimed to be a therapist over here also before. Right. I think there's a whole lot of crackers. Uh, yeah. You know. Why, don't, why challenge it? She's clean. Why don't we celebrate that, however she got there? She's Give not, her that. She's not sober. You know, she's I, I got to break. You'll, apologize. You'll pardon me for the interruption. We'll be back with Julia Phillips. You'll never eat lunch in this town again in just a moment. <laughs> Again this year, a leading dental journal says 66% of dentists surveyed plan to increase fees. But the Family Dental Center, located in all Sears stores throughout Northeastern Ohio, is actually reducing some fees. The national average for cleaning an exam is $63, our fee $24. National average for a crown is $459, ours $299. National average for dental reline, $175, ours $99. Call about other dental services at the Family Dental Centers, located at all Sears stores throughout Northeastern Ohio. Ever feel too clumsy some mornings to make a pot of coffee? Wake up to Maxwell House filter packs. Coffee blended with Colombian beans. Pre-measured in their own filters. Because better beans do make better coffee. No fumbling, no bumbling. You get a perfect pot every time. Maxwell House filter packs blended with Colombian beans. Because better beans make better coffee. Coming up at 6 on Cleveland's own New Center 8 schools, businesses and homes evacuated in Cleveland, Brooklyn and Parma this afternoon because of that burning chemical truck on Interstate 480. A warm front has hung up over southwest Ohio. That'll move by tonight. We are in for near record warmth tomorrow. I think we'll see eventually a thunderstorm. Join us at 6. Hi, I'm Joe Garagio. And I'm Johnny Ben At Toyota's Big League Sales Event. Next up, Celica. Wow, check the stats. No wonder it's the fastest mover in its league. With 800 in option package savings on select GT and first-ever incentives on other models. They're going to move even faster. Here's the pitch, and it's good. Look at it go. This Consumer's Digest Best <laughs> Buy is leaving them in the dust. At Toyota, everyone wins. Hurry in, they're going fast. Go see your Toyota dealer today. We're <laughs> really playing ball. Where can you get a delicious Junior Bacon Cheeseburger with two full strips of bacon for just 99 cents? Where can you get an old-fashioned country fried steak with fresh lettuce and mayonnaise for just 99 cents? And where can you get a hot and juicy Junior Swiss Deluxe with the works for just 99 cents? There's only one place I know of. Try all three 99-cent sandwiches now on Wendy's Super Value Menu. Nine favorites, just 99 cents each every day. To be part of the audience, please send a postcard to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. Julia Phillips, yes. I'd like to know how many lawsuits that you anticipate from this book. <laughs> so few. I spent 14 months in legal vetting. This is ironclad. 
Which is not to say that people are not going to call a press conference, sue, and quietly retract three weeks from then. Julia, are you pro producing a movie now? No. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. How do you plan on doing another book if no one will talk to you anymore? It's well, I have my imagination and 47 years of experience, and I like this gig a lot. And it's, it will be a fiction. Oh, now. never again in the realm of real fact. Yes, hello. Uh, I'd like to know what you've been doing for the last 11 years. For the last 11 years? Oh, no, oh, I, I had two overall deals, one at MGM, one at Fox. They led to nothing. I broke myself by staying in the game at my own, you know, with my own money, what there was left of it. I made one tiny movie called The Beat, which bombed, which I still think is a wonderful movie. And the last four years, I've been working on this book. Yeah. There have, went the 11. Have you ever met Mel Gibson? And if so, what is he like? Very short. <laughs> Yes, uh, he Julia. should be grateful. That's all she has to say about it. Yes, Julia, is uh, drugs, etc., a, a given on the Hollywood scene? And if not, uh, do you feel if you were not in Hollywood, this would not have happened to you? No, I think it was in a. Cr I, I have said to my daughter, I think there's a chromosome that says Phillips women have an addictive tendency. I mean, I do subscribe to buy a chemical. I think yeah. you know. Do we have your insiders' belief uh, 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 agreement that? The times you wrote about in the 70s. And the 80s. Right you can't, you cannot do coke now and produce a movie. True or false? Well, you see, I have a theory about this, okay? I really do think that the drugs have not gone away from Hollywood. I just think they're way back in the closet. Way uh, back. Are you there, caller? Hi. Miss Phillips, you're obviously a bright, articulate woman. Why do you find it necessary to write a book that's dependent on the exploitation of others? Well, I don't think it is. Have you read the book? Yes, I have. And you feel it's exploitive of others? I think that, I think that without the mentioning of all the Hollywood names, without the mentioning of all their shortcomings and, and their good qualities, that the book probably wouldn't sell. But uh, that was my experience. I operated in Hollywood and lived in Hollywood and worked in Hollywood, and, and these were my friends for 20 years. That's my life. I mean, I'm sorry you think it's exploitive. I don't. I think it's brave. Are you I there? really do. I Are think you? it's an incredibly brave book, and I'd like for people to start saying that. Are you there, caller? Hi. Well, you can't write your own reviews, Julia. I shouldn't have to tell you that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm working on it. Julia, I praise you for writing this book because it lets everybody see that the people in Hollywood are semi-normal, that they also go to the toilet with the magazine and wake up with bad breath, just like the rest of the world. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah, well, we I learned so much on this program. I think I was just praise. <laughs> you know, if you're not watching this program, you're not going to be able to get... Hey, you just wanted to say. Hi, Julia. Hi. Um, I'd just like to say that my friend mentioned your mother. Um, is your father still alive? Yes. And how do you get along with your father? We're very tight. And my father has been very supportive all the way through. Yeah. You said these people, you f you're friends, and yet it seems from what Phil said, you talk about them and you, you're so down on them. How can they be your friends if you talk about well, them? Uh, well, ex-friends. <laughs> um, I'm brutally frank. I always was. I'm brutally frank. I'm not very tactful. And I felt I was writing for, pe for a post-literate generation for a moment of a pretentious answer. And I was trying to write a movie for the page. It has a really interesting form, this book. Um, and I felt that when I described people, it was my job to give you the full essence of them in less than three sentences because nobody has, nobody has an inclination to read the long paragraph anymore. So if you met somebody who walked into the room and it didn't, and he was the most powerful man in Hollywood, but he was also four foot ten, I think that would be the first thing that you yeah. would tell a friend. Yeah. Jeff Wall comes to your, uh, comes into your life. Helen Reddy's ex-husband, a man who's seen his own horror movie right. with drug abuse, right. had to have surgery as part of his recovery. So? Well, he almost blew out his brain. His nose. No, he woke up when... This is really... Is this for television? It's really disgusting. He wore out his sinus cavity. There's very little room between your sinus cavity and your brain. There was a coke booger. It went into his brain, and his eyes exploded one morning, and his son 
had to drive all over Malibu, found Allie McGraw, who took him to Malibu Emergency. They took one look at him and said, no, thank you. She got him to Cedars. They operated for six hours. And, they, and he was, this is a doctor phrase I really love, he was circling the drain. And within like three minutes of the end of the operation, they found it, excised it, and saved him. And they had to put his eye back on. Uh, and when he was called about the uh, reference to him in his book... He said, she wrote the truth. I adore Mr. Wolf. Uh, you also tell your readers, when you quit dope, sex isn't any fun. Semi-clean as I am, something in his desperate need to fall in love with me touches oh, me. God. And I respond by participating oh, in some of the... Well, you wrote this. What is this? <laughs> and I respond by participating in some of the most boring sex that I've ever endured. But that is how sex, sans drugs, is getting to be with me anyway. The excitement comes with the principle of love as opposed to the love itself. I know. I'm sorry I wrote the truth. The for excitement me. I mean, comes... It's my, you know, this is for me. Wait a minute. The excitement the comes with the principle of love when you're clean. Yes. Uh, when you're on drugs, the, excite the excitement comes from the love itself. Oh, no, I didn't mean it that way Well, at all. explain this to me. I, it's, I'm sure it's only... Just, I'm slow. Just, because I, <laughs> I really think you're onto something that you want to say that's very important, and I, wanna, I want you to... And I'll give you a chance well. to do that as soon as, once again, commerce meets art on The Donahue Show. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Heart disease is the nation's number one, number one killer. You make me feel so young. An estimated 60 million Americans have high serum cholesterol. You make me feel there are songs to be sung. Too much saturated fat, saturated fat may be bad for your height. And every time I see you grin, bad for your height. I am such a happy individual. For your heart. Even when I'm old and gray, I'm gonna feel the way I do today. Cause you make me feel so young. Gummus, get heart smart. The phone's always ringing. Just calling to see if you changed your mind about coming to work here. But her answer is always the same. Because to her, Cleveland's more than just another city. It's the place she's chosen as home. Maybe that's why so many Clevelanders choose New Center 8's Robin Swoboda. She's not just another newscaster. She's become one of their own. Cleveland's news. Cleveland's pride. Cleveland's own. New Center 8. It's ways to go. Batter dip, tender baked, or lightly breaded. Go fish, Sunday through Wednesday, go for our three-piece fish and fries combo, just $2.49. Hi, I'm Chuck Sakaris, president of Physicians Weight Loss Center, and I'm here to tell you that anybody can lose weight on our delicious new low-fat diet. Anybody. Just listen. I was so fat that I looked like a walrus. I weighed 255 pounds when I walked into Physicians Weight Loss Centers. And in 17 weeks, I had lost over 60 pounds and 45 inches. Thank you, Physicians Weight Loss Centers. 14 centers in Cleveland, Akron, and Canton. Check the white pages for the center nearest you. Spring is at Hill. And the new fashions are piling in. Check us out. We're stocking up with more styles, more colors. A huge selection of merchandise is piling in. Check out Hills, the store for great family values. Everybody's talking uh, in Hollywood about Julia Phillips, who has written this uh, front row seat uh, view of Hollywood, uh, mostly in the 70s from the first and only woman ever to receive an Oscar for producing. She produced The Sting. You'll never eat lunch in this town again. Holy cow. Almost everybody winds up hanging on a hook in a meat locker in this book. And you wanted to say about love as the principle as, you know, after, after drugs. 
Well, I think that we really, I think we've never really gotten out of the Victorian era, and I think that, um, I mean, I have friends who think that drugs exist so that people can get close with each other. And for me, anyway, it's just been a very difficult proposition since not so, using drugs. So there is not a man in your life now? I have a lot of male friends. But there's not, no intimacy in your life? No. With my daughter. I mean, I'm very lucky that way. I have a child that mm -hmm. yes. I have an intense relationship with, so I'm not yeah. searching On Saturday way. night, what do you do? Listen to Monica? Well, I run around with my friends. Uh, your friends, as in group? Yeah. And uh, this is, this is uh, you can't help, you've got to bear up for these personal inquiries here. Anybody who writes something, you take all your clothes off in this book. So I, I guess you just have to think of yourself as a candidate for this kind of question. Uh, you, you, you don't care if a man walks into your life or not. Is it, do I understand your mindset? No, I keep telling people this. I am therapized to the point that I know that if I'm in a room with a hundred guys and there's one guy with beautiful blue eyes, no hair on his chest, homicidal tendencies, You'll and a go drug for problem, him. You told us that. That'll be the guy. So, you're... so now I'm grown up enough to know, well, don't act on that. So you don't think you're therapized enough to, to, to dodge Still that bullet? Still working on it. You know what? I bet you there's a lot of nerds out there that you could find happiness with. <laughs> or they with me. How many years did it take you to write this book? It took, two and a, it took um, ten years to think about it. It took two and a half years to write it and a year to rewrite it for the lawyers. Yes. My wife and I were just walking up Lexington Avenue, and your book is very prominent in the bookstores, in the windows of the bookstores. Unfortunately, we thought it was a cookbook. <laughs> but I'd like to ask you a question. With a dagger, uh, with a stiletto. That'll thrill the public. <laughs> question I'd like to ask. If you could indeed have this book made into a movie, who would you like to see play your part? I keep getting asked this question. I, I always I, go, I, I don't say that. Deborah Winger, don't say Deborah Winger. You don't want Deborah Winger. Well, I answered this a long time ago, and I'm actually going to stick to the answer. Jack Nicholson, if he goes on Optifast. <laughs> Um, how old is your daughter and what does she do? She's 17 and a half years old. She's about to graduate from high school and go to college. And no, she doesn't do drugs. Yeah. I would like to know if you don't think it's unfair to the people that you tell these things about, don't you think they should have some privacy or tell about their swollen ankles themselves? Well, now, I think swollen ankles that are in a high-profile restaurant is something for everyone to see. I'm just the one who ma feels it necessary to, like, tell everyone else about it. Um, and uh, the privacy issue is another... There's a libel-slander issue for the public person, and there's a privacy issue for the private person. And I really worked very hard at writing right. away from private... I, I preserve the privacy right. of the private people. Erica Zhang looks like Miss Piggy. She does. <laughs> are, are you there, caller? I think your own failures motivated you to write this book. You're using it to make up for your own lack of accomplishment and to gain any type of fame. What does Goldie Hawn's dirty hair have to do with your life story? Well, first of all, in the book, I, um, Goldie and I were really girlfriends. And I do go into quite um, an, an extensive period of time where I am with this terrible junkie where girl, Goldie acted like a good girlfriend. Um, mainly because Goldie has a heart of stone and kept saying, honey, you got to get out of this. Um, I personally despise the fame aspects of what you have to do to sell a book these days and would be real happy if it was four weeks ago. And how you can say that I had no accomplishment before, I'm No, shocked. I mean a celebrity accomplishment. I've never heard of you before. Has anybody else? Well, that doesn't, that's not necessarily... I don't think that's a relevant question, you know. Yeah. Well, that... I think it is. Especially okay. Yeah. Well, you asked the question. I have no answer. The book is titled, You'll Never Eat Lunch in This Town Again. And as you heard, as you heard uh, not everybody uh, gives it a standing O. But you should also know this. This just may be the biggest selling book about Hollywood in the history of the American motion picture industry. And we'll be back in just a moment. Colorado summer at Beaver Creek Resort. Relax and play in luxurious comfort, savoring the cool, cool.
crisp mornings and lazy, sunny afternoons. A family vacation in the beauty and seclusion of Beaver Creek Resort is an unforgettable experience. Four night lodging packages start at just $132 per person. For Beaver Creek Resort information and to make reservations, call 1-800-525-2257. It is a soldier. He is a soldier. It is part of an army. He is an army. You've met the invaders. And now, meet the exterminator, the Orphan Man. Armed with one of the most sophisticated pest control systems in the world, he wipes out ants, destroys the nest, and prevents their return. Guaranteed. The Orphan Man. One call destroys them all. Coming up following Donahue, the latest on the evacuation of a large part of the neighborhood, including home schools and factories near I-480 and West 130th, and a Detroit woman charged with murdering her soldier husband home on leave. Those stories and more coming up at 6. Yes, ma'am. Did you think this book would sell? And if so, what do you think of the average American person running out to buy this kind of book? Thanks, sir. Well, I see, uh, the book is a real surprise when you read it, but I'm not surprised. My editor keeps saying, don't tell him what a good writer you are. Mm -hmm. And what do I think about the involvement with celebrity? I, I cover it in the book. I think it's a shame that we've become, I mean, I think it's the fall of the Roman Empire. Is that what, we worship celebrities? Yes, I do. Uh-huh. You know, and, and that caller who mentioned, you know, like that I wanted the fame, I, I mean, the fame part is because you have to do this to plug yeah. your book. We I'd rather pop. be, I'd rather be at my computer, frankly. Uh, is it true what they say about Michelle Pfeiffer? Uh, what seducing all her leading men. Do you know anything about that? I have that? no idea. Yeah. But she wears no makeup to the grocery store. <laughs> Good for her. What did you hope to accomplish by writing this book? Um, I thought I had a really, this is a pretentious answer, okay? I, I was born in 1944. I thought I had something to say about the second half of the 20th century in America. How did you get started in Hollywood? <laughs> Uh, I drifted in. I had three publishing jobs, and then I had three movie jobs, kind of the East Coast story person. My husband was on Wall Street. You know how art and commerce meet. We went into partnership with Tony Bill. We optioned a script called The Sting, and while we were waiting for it to be written, we shot the first movie that David Ward, the writer of The Sting, had ever written, which was called Steelyard Blues and starred Jane Fonda and Donald Sutherland and Peter Boyle and was like our going to film school. Yes. Um, it's strange that the woman should indict you for not being a celebrity. It is no insult to Julia that people perhaps do not know who she is. Her Oscar for The Sting was 1973. Three. Uh, here is the first and only woman ever in the history of Hollywood to win an Oscar as a producer. She produced The Sting, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and Taxi Driver. And I wrote all of those scripts. <laughs> yes. I was just wondering, if you were so heavily into drugs in the 70s, how were you able to accurately recall Everyone everything that happened? Everyone asks this yeah. question. Yeah. Several reasons. Number one, I, I had intellectual parents with a highly trained mind. I went to good schools, including Mount Holyoke, strong liberal arts education. Plus, the drugs that I was doing, amphetamines and coke, have a tendency, before you're doing freebase and living, you know, on the, on the floor because the ceiling always seems too low, these things have a tendency to intensify experience. 
burn dialogue. And I was working with uh, over-the-top people. My life was moving.